Hello, this is Hunter McDermott with AnyoneCanPlayGuitar.org with Lesson 3 of Music Theory Basics for Guitar. So today, in this lesson, we'll be talking about the circle of fourths, uh, otherwise known as the circle of fifths. It's the same thing, fourths or fifths, either way you want to go. Uh, I prefer to call it the circle of fourths because the guitar uh, is tuned in fourths, uh, which we can talk about a little bit later. Um, so it just seems to make sense for the guitar to think of the circle in fourths, but it's also fifths. Uh, and we'll look at what a fourth and a fifth is and all that stuff. Um, so in the last lesson, we talked about taking the chromatic scale from the first lesson and turning it into a major scale. Um, but that involves taking a note and going through the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half major scale formula. And if you want to do that really quickly on the fly, sometimes it can be kind of tricky. Uh, so at some point, this, this organizational tool was created that puts all of our scales in one nice, neat little graph that we can look at, and, and we can get all kinds of cool information out of this thing. So here I have a circle of fourths all created for us. So uh, 12 o'clock, at the very top of our circle, we have the key of C. And like we learned in the last lesson, by, going, by picking the letter C and going through your major scale formula, we discovered that C has no sharps and no flats in it. It's just C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, all the natural notes. So we put that right at the top as kind of our basis. Um, so now we can go either direction around this circle. Um, like I was saying, I prefer to go counterclockwise because that involves fourths instead of fifths which is a little bit, a little bit, makes more, a little bit more sense for the guitar. All right, so the, re, the way this is organized is we have a C at the top. Now, to figure out what our next position on this circle is, we take whatever the fourth note of our C scale was. So that's where the fourth comes in. So say we have a C scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. All right. We gave those notes scale degrees in that last lesson, so we learned that C is the first note of the C scale, D would be the second note, E would be the third note, and F would be the fourth note. So that's how we get our next position on the scale. We go from the key of C that we're on right now, and then we go to the fourth note of it, otherwise known as a fourth, that's an interval known as a fourth, then we go over here and we get the key of F. All right, now they're arranged in such a way where as you go around the circle in this counterclockwise fashion, every position, every next position has one more flat note in it. So we're just constantly building up, adding more and more flats as we go along. Now if we go around the opposite direction, we, we start adding sharps one more, one and more each time. And then in the bottom here, we kind of overlap each other. Um, so uh, the way to to memorize the order in which this circle goes around, and this would be a pretty helpful, handy thing to do, is to start with C and think of C as C for circle, F for fourths, so C, F. All right, then we have the word bead, B-E-A-D, and then we have G. So you can think bead, G, and they're all flat. All right, then that's followed around by bead, G again, except they're natural. So we have C, F, bead, G, flats, and then bead, G, naturals. Kind of abstract, I know, but every little thing we can think of that, that helps is helpful. All right, so now we go over here to this F scale. That's all great. So F is different from C. The only reason that F is different from C is because it has one flat in it. It still has one of every letter, like we learned in the last lesson. Every scale has to have one of every letter, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. All right, so what makes F unique is that it has one flat. Now, if we were to go back and to our, our major scale formula here and plug in our F at the beginning, we'd go F, and then a whole step would give us G, another whole step would give us A, and then a half step would, could give us a B flat. Now, it wouldn't be A-sharp because we can't have two A's in the same scale. We already had an A, so we're going to call this B-flat just to make sure that we're differentiating them enough. Uh, so we'd have a B-flat, and then we'd have C, D, E, and then back to F. 
So the only note that's really different from the key of C is that we have a B flat there, and that's all it is. By changing that one note, we have changed the whole sound of the scale or the key. It gives us a whole new range of chords and melodies and things that we can get out of it. Um, all right, so a little handy thing down here to look at is the order for the placement of sharps and flats. So I've got a sharp sign here on the top, and then I got a whole row of notes. And then down here, I've got the flat symbol, and then I got a whole row of notes there. So if you look at this, since we're doing the F key, and F has one flat in it, we see that the very first note that we come to is a B. So if I look at this and I go, okay, I want to play an F scale, what's F got in it? Well, it's got one flat, what's the flat? Boom. You just go down here and go, hey, there's only one flat, and it's B. All right, so let's go to the next key. We just learned that the F scale has F, G, A, B flat as its fourth note, which means that the next position on our circle of fourths will be a B flat. All right, now what makes B flat different from F is it has two flats instead of one. That's all, you had one more flat, and now it's a totally different thing. So it's the key of B flat, and that has two flats. All right, but the way you figure out what notes are flat within that scale is the same. You come down here, look at your flat symbol, and then go, okay, well, it's got two flats, so it has B flat, that's one, and then it has E flat, that's two. Now, knowing that my notes, I always have one of every letter in every scale, and that they're always organized in an alphabetical fashion from wherever they start, uh, I can quickly rattle off the notes of a B flat scale and go, okay, well, it's a B flat scale, so it starts with B flat. I got a C, then I got a D, then I got an E flat, because that's my other flat note. Then I got F, G, A, B flat. I can quickly name them, because I already know what notes are in them. All right, so B flat, C, D, E flat is our fourth note. Boom, there's E flat, the next position on the scale, and it has three flats in it. What three flats? B flat, E flat, A flat. Now, if you'll notice down here, the order of these notes here, B, E, A, D, G, C, F, is exactly the same order that we've been going in this whole time. They're all arranged by fourths. So we remember we did C, F, B, D, G, B, D, G, well there it is, B, E, A, D, G, followed by C, and then F. So it's just basically like following this pattern of the, of the scale. So that goes back to if you can memorize the order in which the notes go, counterclockwise, then you can go clockwise with it, and you can quickly name what order the notes are flatted in and all that fun stuff. All right, so the reason why you often see this, this same thing known as the circle of fifths is because if you go the opposite direction, if you go clockwise, you would be going by fifths. So we learned that F was the fourth note of the C scale, so the fifth note of a C scale would just be G, C, D, E, F, G. Fifth note of a G scale, G, A, B, C, D, two sharps, and then A, and so on and so forth, all the way down and around the circle. So, you know, it really doesn't matter. If you want to go clockwise instead of counterclockwise, because that's more familiar to you, then that works, as long as you can memorize the exact order that they go around in. All right, so a couple other things. Down here, we, t we have these three scales that they overlap. All right, so we have a D flat scale, but then underneath it we have C sharp. And we learned in the first lesson that D sharp, or D flat and C sharp are actually the same note. But as a scale, if you start with a C sharp and you go through the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half formula, you end up with seven sharps. That's every single one of our notes sharp. But if I started that with a D flat and I went through and I was counting all flats, then I'd end up with only five flats. So the reason is we don't want to mix sharps and flats when we're talking about major scales. So if that's if I start with B flat, for example, like we just did, then I'm not going to suddenly have uh, a, a D sharp note in there. It's got to be an E flat. We're going to have all flats and naturals not mixing sharps and flats together. So uh, our D flat scale actually ends up only having five flats versus a C-sharp which has seven sharps. Now they're both the same thing. If you play them on an instrument, they sound identical. Um, but you can technically call one D-flat or you can call it C-sharp. Depends on how you want to look at it. All right, we go around here. We have F-sharp and G-flat. Again, same thing. 
except F sharp has six sharps, G flat has six flats. So they're six of one, half dozen of another if you want to play it F sharp, if you want to play in G flat, it doesn't matter. Same thing. Uh, you just pick one and go with it. All right, let me go around one more time and we get the key of B, which would have five sharps, versus C flat, which would have seven flats. Now you're looking at that and going, what? C flat? But you told me there's a B and C right next to each other. All right, technically, that's correct. So if we have a B note, then we looked at in the first lesson that the C is right next to it. They're right, they're neighbors. So there's technically really in between, there's nothing in between them. They're just like a white right one from the other to the other. But technically, if I take a C and I go back a half a step, I flat it. There's that verb form I was talking about in the first lesson. So if I flat a C, then I get C flat. Now the way that C flat note sounds, if you play a C flat on an instrument, it sounds exactly like a B. So you'll find a lot of things are like that in, in music theory where it's just sort of a, a semantics type argument. You know, it can be one thing, it can be another thing. It's important for you to understand that it can be both, whether or not it needs to be both all the time. You kind of just can pick and choose. So technically we can have a C flat scale. It's like a C scale except every single note is flat. More commonly you'll see it as B, but I won't say you won't ever see C flat because it exists. All right, then we go around, the, we finish around the circle with our sharp keys. Now there's an inner layer here uh, on, the, on the graph I've drawn with minor keys, but we're gonna save that for later. Uh, all right, so that's how it works. What I would encourage you to do is to find a graphic of this, and I may offer one for download soon, um, so you can memorize the order in which these notes go around by fourths or by fifths, whichever you choose, and also to make sure you understand uh, the order in which the, the notes are flatted or sharped. So, like if I go over here to a D scale and it has two sharps in it, that I instantly need to know that it's F sharp and C sharp because there they are on my my little sharp line here. So this B G C F thing is just flipped over and reversed to get to the sharp scales. So if you know it one way and you can go backwards in your mind, you automatically know it the other way. All right, so I know it's a very abstract concept. Music theory and music in general is a pretty abstract thing, but we have these little tools that help us organize all this abstract stuff. Uh, so again, this is all just major scales and quickly being able to go, boom, I know that has five sharps and I know what they are and be able to, to you know, play something in that key if we need to. All right, that's it. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them for me. And stay tuned for lesson four. Thanks a lot.